Hey Canucks fans, we have some updates on Furlan, Levo, and the Black Aces. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, June the 8th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's both positive and timely. Thanks to all of you who joined me for my live stream last night on YouTube. Had a lot of fun as always. Went by very quickly. Well, went by very quickly for me. I don't know about you. If You have to listen to me for talk for an hour straight, but it was really good. A lot of really good questions and I was thankful to all of you who joined me last night. Check out the replay if you'd like to. Today I come to you with some roster news. Interesting things here. Courtesy of Farhan Lalji of TSN. It's, uh, I'm recording this just after 1.30, so he tweeted this out just about half in the last half an hour or so. So, and uh, you definitely don't look at Farhan to be the newsbreaker. You usually look at guys like Jeff Patterson or Thomas Drantz or Rick Dollywell, Ben Kuzma, many others. But some really uh, some interesting nuggets here. So firstly, he said that Michael Furland is ready to skate and he'll be practicing at the Jets practice facility once uh, Phase 2 opens there. Um, so interesting things there. He said he, he feels like he's ready to go. I'm not sure who Farhan's source was. I didn't get a chance to check it out, and nor did he name a source just yet. Maybe his source is himself, which is really cool. So Farhan says that Michael Ferlin is ready to go. He uh, And if he doesn't have any setbacks, then he expects to be ready to play when the Canucks uh, open their qualifying round series against Minnesota, likely in August. And that means training camp would be somewhere in maybe mid to late July. So that's good news for the Canucks fans. For Canucks fans, that's good news for Michael Ferlin, obviously. We know of his concussion history before he got to the team. And of course, suffering that concussion against LA near the start of the season. And then coming back, having a setback in Utica. And then having a setback when he played with Vancouver. So hopefully he's better because he's, ex I talked about this in my live stream last night. He's the exact type of player that you want in the playoffs. I remember in 2015 when Ferlin was playing for Calgary. He terrorized all six of our demon, and he, he terrorized like many of our forwards as well. Um, he was crazy. He terrorized me, and I was watching from the comfort of my own living room. So uh, Michael Ferlin, he's fast. He's tough. He can put people through the boards. Now, he may have to change the way he plays because of his concussion history. You'd hope not, but maybe that might be the, the smart way to go. But regardless, he is a really, really good player uh, come playoff time. And he made an impact five years ago when he was playing for the other team with, with Calgary. And I would just love it if he had an impact for the Vancouver Canucks. Like he, he could be one of those solid uh, unsung hero type guys. You know, he's not going to crack the top six, especially with guys like Toffoli now and Miller in our lineup. But he can certainly be a great bottom six guy, a good depth guy, score a goal once or t uh, once in a while. And especially, especially um, just make it really hard for Minnesota Wild uh, D-men and forwards. So that's good news. If that's indeed the case, that uh, Michael Ferlin is indeed feeling good and hoping to contribute um, this season still. Do the Canucks... Um you can you can obviously use a roster spot on him. You have a lot of roster spots, which I'll get to in a second with this whole expanded roster thing. But do you do you risk playing him? Because imagine in a worst case scenario, if he gets hurt in the first shift or two, and now you're down a forward for for the rest of the game. So that's something that the Canucks will have to navigate and look at as they get closer to returning to play. But good news, Michael Ferland uh, sounds like everything's going well in his recovery. On the flip side, it doesn't sound like things are going well with Josh Levo. Uh, Farhan Lalji tweeted about this as well, saying that he is not progressing as well as hoped. Uh, we knew he had suffered that broken kneecap back in December in that win over Vegas. They initially said two to three months. Now we're at six months and they're still not going well. So there's a good chance that he will not be ready to play once the t team picks up practices and game in the next two months. So it's unfortunate. He's a UFA. That's going to hurt his, obviously, his bargaining power. But we should not count on seeing Josh Levo um, in the Canucks lineup for the qualifying series. And it's kind of interesting how I think, at least I was thinking the other way. I thought it was going to be Levo in, Ferlin not, but it might be the other way around in that Ferlin will be in and Josh Levo won't be. So we continue to hope that Josh, Levo recovery, Josh Levo's recovery goes well. And then I talked about the Black Aces. I've talked about this. I know uh, Harmon and Thomas of The Athletic, they just wrote about this over the weekend predicting, projecting the Vancouver Canucks roster because you are going to have uh, an, allowed to have an expanded roster. And rumors are it's going to be 28 skaters and unlimited goalies. And if that's the case, uh, including Ferlin and Lebo, the Canucks basically had room for five skaters. But what they did, apparently, according to Farhan, once again, he's my source of all info today, apparently the Canucks submitted a list of 11 players yesterday 
those that will be considered for these roster spots. And there's one goalie on there, Michael DiPietro. I'm surprised Louis Domingue isn't on there. Maybe that comes later, or maybe the Canucks are fine with just the three goaltenders of Markstrom, um, Demko, and and Michael DiPietro. But we'll see if Domingue actually uh, was found, if they're going to bring him up or at least uh, hope to bring him up as well to make it four goalies. But at least with uh, Di Pietro, he had a really good season with Utica, and he'll be the, the backup to the backup, right? Markstrom, Demko, and then Di Pietro, who might be one of the future um, you know, goaltenders for our team. For the actual skaters, there are five defensemen and five forwards. And you might remember in my vlog, I talked about, I think the five players were going to be on the back end, Breezebaugh, Sautner, and Rafferty, and those were indeed three of the five that they brought up. They also brought up, uh, they, I mean, they also um, requested or reported uh, Jalen Chatfield and Ole Levy. So those are the five D-men that the Canucks have least submitted for consideration for the Black Aces. Again, Guillaume Brisbois, Ashton Sautner, um, is it Ashton Sautner or Anton Sautner? No, Ashton Sautner. Um, and then, uh, sorry, I just had a brain fart there. So, um, Breezeball, Sautner, and then, of course, Brogan Rafferty, who we expect that will be in our lineup next season. And now we learned about Ole Ulevi and Jalen Chatfield as well. So those are the five D-men. As for the five forwards, two guys that I predicted, um, Justin Bailey and Tyler Gravak, the center. And then also Reed Boucher, that some people have mentioned, Cole Lind, and the most intriguing one, Sven Berchi. And we heard about the report that came out last month about him. He thinks his time with Vancouver is done. He wants to be traded. He wants a fresh start. All these kind of things. He thinks that he can help any team in the league. Um, but Sven Berchi, he might have a chance to, to prove himself because he was listed as a potential call-up for the Vancouver Canucks as well. So again, these are 10 skaters plus one goaltender. Let's not worry about the goaltender. So the 10 skaters, but I don't think they're going to be allowed to bring up all 10. I think they're going to have to pare that list down to five or six. But as of now, five D... Five demon. They are Rafferty, Breezeball, Sautner, um, Yolevi, and Chatfield, and then five forwards: Bailey, Boucher, Lind, Gravak, and Sven Berchi. So interesting stuff there. So there's some roster news for you right now. Michael Furland sounds like he's ready to go. Josh Levo sounds like he's not ready to go. And then the Canucks have submitted ten names from which they will pull their five to six extra roster spots. So. Question of the day, what do you think of all that? What do you, th um, do you want, maybe I'll, I'll give you three questions. Number one, do you think Michael Furling can be a, an impact player for us in the playoffs? Number two, um, how disappointed are you with Josh Levo? And do you think it's going to hurt his, uh, not, not disappointed in him, but disappointed for him? Is it going to hurt his bargaining power? And number three, kind of a bigger question, which of those 10 guys, which five guys would you want um, as the Canucks true black aces if they are limited to five, which I think they will be. And again, going back to my vlog from a week and a half ago, I talked about three defensemen, Breezeball, Sautner, and Rafferty. And I talked about two forwards, that being Bailey and Gravak. So I'd love to know your thoughts on who you think the black aces will end up being as well. So lots of things to talk about. Leave it in the comments and I will read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless and go Canucks go.